Hello everyone, in this video I'll be discussing with you on Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I'm Rima Stanley, tutor at Triple M College of Nursing. So at the end of this video, you will be able to define what is OCD, explain the symptoms of OCD, describe the incident and risk factors for OCD, explain the diagnostic method used for OCD, and discuss the management for OCD. Now, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is in short called OCD, is a common chronic and a long lasting disorder in which a person has uncontrollable reoccurring thoughts, which is called as obsession, or a behavior, which is called compulsion, that he or she feels the urge to repeat over and over and again. Now let us see the definitions of OCD. It is a disorder in which a person have recurring unwanted thoughts, ideas or sensation that make them feel driven to do something repetitively. Now this repetitive behavior such as hand washing, checking on things or cleaning can significantly interfere with a person's daily activities and including his social interactions. Many people with OCD, without, uh, many people even without OCD have distressing thoughts or repetitive behaviors. However, these thoughts and behaviors do not typically disrupt their daily life. However, for people with OCD, these thoughts are persistent which means it is present throughout the day and most of the days and their behavior which are rigid so not performing that particular behavior causes great distress so many people with OCD they know that their obsessions are not realistic however people looking their behaviors may think they could be true so even if this if if they know that their obsessions are not realistic People with OCD have difficulty disengaging themselves from the obsessive thoughts or stopping the compulsive action. Now let us see the symptoms of OCD. People with OCD may have symptoms of obsession, compulsion or both. This interferes with all aspects of life such as work, school, and personal relationship. Now let us see what is obsession. Obsessions are recurrent and persistent thoughts, impulses or images that cause distressing emotions such as anxiety or disgust. Many people with OCD, they recognize that the thoughts, impulses or images are a product of their mind and are not uh, reasonable. However, the distress caused by these intrusive thoughts cannot be resolved by any logical reasoning. And most people with OCD, they try to ease this distress of obsession, either by compulsion, ignoring it, suppressing the uh, obsession, or distracting themselves with some other activities. So here are some of the typical obsessions, that is fear of getting contaminated by uh, people or the environment, unwanted forbidden thoughts, mainly involving sex, religion or harm, extreme concerns with order, symmetry or precisions, recurrent intrusive thoughts of sounds, images, words or numbers, fear of losing or discarding some, something that is important to them, aggressive thoughts towards others or self. So to summarize the symptoms of obsession, these include obsessional thoughts, these are words, ideas and beliefs that intrudes forcibly into the patient's mind, uh, which becomes unpleasant and shocking to the patient. Obsessional image, that is clearly imagined scenes, violent or disgusting, involving abnormal sexual practices, etc. Obsessional rumination, these are internal debate 
or argument for or against for even the simplest everyday actions that are reviewed uh, endlessly. Obsessional doubts, it mainly concerns of whether a particular actions have been completed adequately. Example, for forgetting to turn off the stove or locking a door, etc. Sometimes these doubts may even take uh, in a form of a fundamental beliefs such as the very existence of God and so on is being doubted. Then obsessional impulses. This is an urge to perform an act usually of violent or embarrassing kind, such as injuring a child in a public, etc. Obsessional rituals. This, are, this can take in the form of both mental or physical activities. Example of mental activities include counting repeatedly in a special way or repeating a certain words and the behavioral forms are like repeating as, uh, such as wash, sorry, washing hands 20 times or more times a day. Obsessive slowness. This takes in the form of marked slowness in everyday daily activities of the person. Now let us see what is compulsion. So these are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that a person feels driven to perform in response to an obsession. So this behavior typically prevents or reduces a person's distress related to obsession. Now compulsion may be excessive responses that are directly relating to an obsession such as excessive hand washing which is due to a fear of contamination or actions that are completely unrelated to obsessions. And in the most uh, severe cases, a constant repetition of these rituals will be seen throughout the day, making a normal routine impossible for them to complete. So here are some of the typical compulsions. This include excessive or ritualized hand washing, showering, brushing teeth or toileting, repeated cleaning or house of uh, cleaning of household objects ordering or arranging things in a particular way repeatedly checking locks switches or appliances constantly seeking approval or reassurance from others and repeated counting to a certain number now remember that not all rituals or habits are compulsions Every, everyone doubts, checks things sometimes, but a person with OCD generally cannot control his or her thoughts or behaviors, even when thoughts and behaviors are recognized as excessive. And they spend at least one hour a day on these thoughts or behavior and does not get a pleasure when performing the behavior or rituals but may feel a brief relief from anxiety caused by the thoughts. Now they also experience a significant problems in their daily life due to these thoughts or behavior. So you would see there is an impairment in their socio-occupational functioning. Now let us see the incidence of OCD. So OCD is a common disorder that affects adults adolescents and children all over the world. And most people are diagnosed by the age of 19, typically with an earlier onset in boys than in girls. But onset after age 35 is rare. Now let us see the prevalence of OCD among adults, a study done among the US population. So based on the diagnostic interview, it shows that uh, among the US, adult, especially age 18 or older, shows an estimate of 1.2% having an OCD. Prevalence of OCD was also higher for female, which is about 1.8% than for females, which uh, than for males, that is about 0.5%. And lifetime prevalence of OCD among US adults was 2.3%. Now let us see the risk factors for OCD. So causes of OCD are unknown, but risk factors include uh, a genetic link, 
That is, the twin and family studies have shown that people with the first degree relatives, such as parents, siblings, or children, have OCD, uh, has, uh, who have OCD, are at a higher risk for developing OCD. Now, are OCD brains different? Yes, some of the imaging studies have shown that there is a difference in the frontal cortex and subcortical structure of the brain in patients with OCD. And it appears to have a connection with OCD symptoms and abnormalities in certain areas of the brain. However, the connection is not clear and the research is still needed to be done. Now, let us see the environmental risk factors. So an association between uh, childhood trauma and obsessive compulsive symptoms has been reported in some studies. However, again, more studies are needed to understand this relationship. In some cases, it shows that children uh, may develop OCD or OCD symptoms following streptococcal infection, and this is called as pediatric uh, autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infections, which is otherwise called as PANDAS. Now, let us see how OCD is diagnosed. So typically a diagnosis is done with a thorough history and mental status examination, along with ICD-10 criteria for OCD. And uh, the other scale which is used for diagnosing the severity of obsession and compulsion is using Yale-Brown obsessive compulsive disorder. Now let us see what is the treatment and therapies used for patients with OCD. So OCD is typically treated with medication and psychotherapy or a combination of two. Although most people with OCD respond to the treatment, some people continue to experience the symptoms. And sometimes people with OCD also have other mental disorders such as anxiety, depression, or body dysmorphic disorder. And that is why it is important to consider all this disorder with, be, before making a decision on his treatment. So some of the common medications uh, which is used for treatment include selective uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Uh, these are mainly used to help reduce symptoms of OCD. So uh, as usually this medication requires a higher daily doses in the treatment of OCD than when it is used for depression. And it may take about eight to 12 weeks to start uh, working or for the, its uh, therapeutic effects. But some people experience even more rapid improvement also. So the example of those medication includes fluoxetine, sertraline. And in, in some uh, case, the symptoms do not improve with this medication. So they may also use antipsychotic medications, commonly aripiprazole and respiradone, and it is found as uh, effective. Now, psychotherapy. So psychotherapy can be an effective treatment for adults and children with OCD, and research also have shown that certain types of psychotherapy, especially uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, and other related therapies, example, habit reversal training is an effective, is as effective as medication for many individuals. So research also shows that a type of CBT, which is called as exposure and response prevention, is very, very uh, effective in treating symptoms with OCD. So this uh, uh, treatment involves spending time in the very situation that actually triggers compulsion, example like touching dirty objects, but then being prevented from undertaking the usual resulting compulsion, example like hand washing. So it is, uh, the procedure is very effective in uh, reducing compulsive behavior in OCD. It is also found that uh, it is very effective for people who are not responding to serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So as with most uh, mental disorders, treatment is usually personal, personalized and uh, might begin with either medications or psychotherapy. 
or with a combination of both. And for many patients, exposure and response prevention is an add-on treatment of choice when SRIs, that is selective serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors, are not effective in treating the symptoms of OCD. So the added treatment include, uh, uh, therapies include relaxation. These are simple things like medica meditations, yoga, and massage can help with stressful OCD symptoms. The other things include mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. This involves learning mindfulness skill to cope with distressed Trigger, triggered by obsessive uh, thoughts. So here are, uh, these are the common psychotherapy used for patients with OCD. Now let us see some OCD related uh, conditions. So these are some of the uh, conditions which seem similar to OCD. However, they are a separate condition, but they have uh, symptoms of obsessions. So body dysmorphic disorder, uh, in this, the person will have a fixed, repeated uh, thoughts or worry about their physical appearance. Hoarding disorder, that is um, collecting, arranging, or ordering things, or to explain a simple way, these are collecting an excess of unneeded objects or, and having difficulty throwing things away. But this uh, does not trigger distress. However, people with OCD might collect due to compulsion to complete sets or because they believe not saving those items lead to harm. So the other condition include trichotillomania, that is persistent urge for pulling out hair or eating hair. Next is uh, excoriation, that is picking skin. The other conditions also include like hypochondriasis, that is uh, a repeated thoughts and fear of having a particular physical ailment. Then the olfactory reference syndrome that has got to do with the body order or how a person smells. Generalized anxiety disorder also involves frequent and persistent worries, concerns often uh, related to everyday life thoughts, etc. So although they avoid certain situations or people, they generally don't lead to compulsive actions. The other disorder include tics, that is a sudden repeated involvement, movements that can happen also with OCD. However, it does not, uh, it's not uncommon for people with OCD to also have a tic disorder, which is actually called as Tourette's syndrome. Now, key points includes, so OCD is an intrusive, intrusion of unwanted thoughts, that is obsession, that leads to a repeated uh, behavior or urge to perform a behavior, which is called as compulsions. And the symptoms include both obsessive or compulsion or a combination of both is seen in a person. And a diagnosis is done using ICD-10 criteria for OCD and also Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale. And the treatment is mainly typically uh, antidepressant are uh, used and also cognitive behavioral therapy is found very, very effective in the treatment of OCD. Reference. R. Srivani, A Guide to Mental Health and Psychiatric Nursing, also website of NIMHANS and WebMed. Thank you.